Bats have a scary reputation, even though most of them are actually harmless. But there is one species that causes big problems, the common vampire bat. In Latin America, vampire bats are destroying lives and livelihoods. They prey on pigs, on calves, on children. And sometimes sick bats carry rabies. It's a horrifying disease. Once someone exhibits symptoms, it's too late to save them. Ranchers want the government to exterminate vampire bats, which raises a question. Should humans completely wipe out this deadly species? Good question. To try and wrap my head around this problem, I headed down to a major battleground in the human versus vampire bat war, Panama. Yeah, all right. This country is bat paradise. The entirety of the United States has about 47 species of bats. Panama, which is much smaller, has 120 species of bats. This is Mae Dixon. She's something of a walking bat encyclopedia. And she told me there's a lot of confusion about bats. A really huge one is that people think that all bats are vampires. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The vast majority of bats don't drink blood and don't actually harm anyone. To prove it, Mae insisted I meet some. So what kind is this? I'll tell you in a moment, I can't tell yet. So this is a Jamaican fruit bat. Do you want to feed him? I can try. Wow. There you go. Thirsty. You wouldn't want to kill these bats, and not just because they're cute. Bats are the secret heroes of the jungle. See you later. You've got fruit eaters like the Jamaican fruit bat that spread seeds and replant the forest. Bats with long tongues that drink nectar and pollinate flowers. Including agave, which is important, because without it we wouldn't have tequila. Bats who use echolocation to catch bugs the bugs that bite us and eat our crops. We met lots of amazing and useful bats, but... None of those are vampire bats. No, not one. And that's the species I'm really interested in. Luckily for me, May works with a guy who keeps a vampire bat colony in a big shed. Oh, there they are. Whoa. Yep. That's a bucket of cow blood. So each night, each bat is taking about a tablespoon of blood, which is not that much, but when you have 36 bats, it adds up. I often think of vampire bats as kind of the super bat. They're stealthy, mammal-finding, blood-drinking little ninjas. Their noses have these infrared heat sensors so they can detect warm veins beneath the skin. They have low frequency hearing. It's like they're specially evolved to hear the breathing of big animals. So they have these canines for sort of cutting away hair and feathers. And their front biting teeth are so sharp, prey don't feel a thing. And unlike most bats, they can run. These guys are great at what they do, but as far as we know, they don't play any important role. The jungle would be just fine without them. Now, for thousands of years, vampire bats did their thing and weren't much of a problem. There weren't that many of them, and there were enough peccaries, tapirs, and capybara to satisfy their thirst for blood. Then, everything changed. In 1493, Columbus brought a new blood source across the sea, cattle. Colonists destroyed jungles and replaced them with pastures. The herds multiplied, and vampire bat populations shot up with them. And that's when they started causing problems for ranchers. This is still going on today. This map shows where trees have disappeared in just the last 15 years. In many of these places, ranchers are trying to make a living on the very edge of vampire bat territory. The town of Pueblo Nuevo is a perfect example, so I decided to pay it a visit. Here, life revolves around softball, fishing, and most important, the vampire bat's favorite food. Where are the bats? They're waiting for sundown in the hills just outside of town. A guide named Austin Garrido agrees to take me into the bat caves. There, this view into an alien world. There are so many kinds of bats here, but the vampire bats shrink away from our headlamps. We have to use infrared light to get a good look at them. 
Every night when darkness falls, the vampires leave their caves to search for blood. Los nietos míos que vivían allá, donde están las vacas, ellos vivieron tiempo allá y amanecían mordidos los pies. Mordían los puercos, mordían los teneros, mordían los niños. Una vaca daba luz tenero, a veces usted iba al medio, era que lo hallaba. Ahora no, pare hoy y mañana va en la noche y ya está picado, dos, tres, picadura. Y fuera de que pica, transmite la rabia, que es una enfermedad muy peligrosa, muy peligrosa. Rabies costs farmers in Latin America $30 million a year, and it kills dozens of people. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a quedar aquí en, en... No podemos crear gallinas, vacas, puercos. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Podemos estar de acuerdo con el otro, el, el Pero ese, nosotros si podemos eliminarlo, lo vamos a eliminar. They explain that the Panamanian government actually does try to poison the vampire bats here and there. They spread a toxic paste on the back of a bat. And when that bat returns to its roost, the poison spreads through the whole colony. But here's the thing, nearby bats just come in to take their place. And new research suggests that all this may just increase the spread of rabies. Now, in an ideal world, you just find a way to get rid of the rabies virus itself. But that would take a hugely expensive vaccination program. You'd have to get all the people and the cows and the pigs and even the bats. So as far as the ranchers and the government are concerned, the best thing to do is just keep on killing vampire bats. Try and drive them to extinction. Which brings me back to our question. Back in town, I asked Jerry what we would lose if we did wipe out vampire bats. When I give talks to the public, one of the most common questions I get is, how are vampire bats useful to us? And I tell this story about the anticoagulant that vampire bats have in their saliva. It's like a drug that keeps the blood of their prey from clotting. It's a better chemical anticoagulant for treating stroke than anything that we've synthesized. But that's not really an honest answer of how I feel. My feeling is that vampire bats are just inherently valuable. I seem to vaguely recall thinking that vampire bats were ugly, but now their faces just look like, like a person's face. He says they behave like people. When one bat is starving, another one comes to feed it. They wrap each other in these weird hugs, mothers and daughters, brothers and sisters, even bats that aren't related to each other, but have what scientists call enduring cooperative social bonds. In other words, they're friends. It's those friendships that make that poison spread so quickly through a colony. The bats love to cuddle. And that makes this question about what to do with them really difficult. The way that I Think of it as sort of analogous to how we relate to wolves now. Now, wolves were a problem for farmers and ranchers, just like vampire bats. And for long stretches of time, people just wanted to eradicate wolves. But now we see wolves as these beautiful, charismatic, intelligent animals that we can relate to. I don't think we have that kind of relationship with vampire bats. But I think if people knew all the things that I know about vampire bats, you would look at them differently as beautiful, intelligent animals. If you have questions for Skunk Bear, submit them via this link. And please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.